bulging biceps, iron, horseshoe triceps, granite forearms. Picture any bodybuilder and what's the first image that comes to mind? Those huge, massive biceps and cross-striated triceps stretching the sleeves of his t-shirt. Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Dieters, editor-in-chief and associate publisher of Muscle and Fitness Magazine. Over the course of this video, IFBB professional bodybuilder and USA champion Mike Matarazzo, along with top Ms. Olympia contender Sandy Rydell, will show you an intelligent and efficient way to develop your own set of killer arms. When we say intelligent training, we're talking about the coordinated effort of weight training along with proper nutrition and adequate recuperation. All three of these elements must be incorporated together if you expect to achieve the success you're after. You need intense, efficient, growth-stimulating workouts. Your body also needs time to recuperate and adapt to the stresses of weight training. Finally, proper nutrition provides a foundation to support this growth and recuperation. Training, eating, and resting intelligently are the keys to victory. Before we begin with the actual training techniques, Let's talk about one more vital key, mental attitude. In volume one of our victory video series, How to Build Mega Mass, we talked at length about the importance of keeping a clear mental focus and a positive attitude. Remember, your mind is a powerful tool, one that determines your level of success in all aspects of your life, including your success in the gym. So with our minds properly prepared, let's go blast some arms. What makes killer arms? First and foremost is size. That's where mass building exercises really pay off. But equally important are proportion and shape. Big, peaking biceps look even better when matched with equally huge, well-shaped horseshoe triceps. Overall, you're looking for big, dense, cut arms with razor-sharp definition. To work the biceps efficiently, we have to understand how they function. The biceps flex or bend the arm and can actually bring the shoulder forward because the muscle crosses the shoulder joint. That's why form is so critical to targeting the biceps, or any muscle for that matter. When we're working the biceps, we don't want to use other muscles to cheat and make things easier. That would reduce our stimulus to growth. With that in mind, let's start with one of the best all-around biceps exercises, standing barbell curls. Standing barbell curls are excellent for working the entire biceps and forearm. An easy curl bar can also be used. Take a wide grip on the bar, about three to five inches wider than your shoulders. Place your feet about shoulder width apart. Then, keeping your upper arm stationary, curl the bar up towards your shoulders in a smooth arc. Briefly squeeze your biceps at the top, then slowly lower the bar back to the starting position. This is primarily a mass building exercise and sets should range from three to five, and reps should fall in the eight to 12 range. Remember, don't swing the weight. You need to keep strict form, keep the pressure on the bicep where it belongs. Our next exercise is preacher curls. Preacher curls can be performed either standing or sitting with a straight bar or an easy curl bar. In either case, the form is the same. Place your upper arms on the inclined pad of the preacher bench. As you smoothly curl the bar up, be sure your upper arms stay glued to the bench. The purpose of this exercise is to work the lower portion of your biceps, so make sure you curl all the way up to your shoulders, not just halfway. This will ensure your lower biceps are targeted. Many novices make the mistake of using more weight than they can handle with proper form, preventing them from performing a full range of motion and getting the maximum effect from this exercise. This exercise is more of a shaping type exercise the set should fall in the 3 to 4 range, and reps should be between 12 and 20. <laughs> Remember, 
Remember, keep constant tension in the muscles to keep force the blood in there. Also, supinate the wrist in as much as possible to get peak contraction. Now let's move on to alternating dumbbell curls. When performing alternate dumbbell curls, be sure to keep your palms and thumbs parallel to the floor as you curl the weights up. That way, you're in a supination position, giving your biceps a full contraction throughout the movement. Alternate your arms, performing a complete repetition with one arm, followed by the opposite arm. Squeeze the top of the movement and be careful not to lift your shoulders or allow your hands to turn in as you lift the weights. Sets should range from 3 to 4 and reps anywhere from 8 to 25 depending on whether you're using the exercise for a mass building exercise or a shaping movement. I mainly use this exercise as a shaping movement, making sure to squeeze at the top for a better peak. Now let's move on to concentration curls. Sit on the edge of a bench with your upper arm braced against your inner thigh so your upper arm is stable and can't move. Now using strict form, curl the dumbbell to the top, hold briefly, and lower to the starting position. This helps you build those mountainous peaks in the mid-bicep belly. You can also do this exercise with a barbell by turning the pad around on the preacher curl so that it is flat. Then place your upper arms on the pad and lead over the preacher curl so that your arms are hanging straight down. This allows you to put a direct pressure on the biceps and take any leverage away you might have from leaning back during the movement. Sets for this exercise should fall in the two to three range and reps should be somewhere between 15 and 25. The key to concentration curls is to always use a weight you can handle and never swing it up and down. Now that we've blasted biceps, <clears throat> Let's move on to triceps. The triceps function to extend the arm and, like the biceps, actually cross the shoulder joint. The triceps also make up about two-thirds of your upper arm measurement. Remember, we want to target the triceps. We don't want to cheat with our shoulders in order to maximize growth stimulation. Form is, as always, critical. So let's begin with tricep pushdowns. Pushdowns, or pressdowns as they're sometimes called, are usually performed on a cable-type machine. They were designed to work the triceps directly, using a close grip on either a straight or a curved bar. Begin with the bar in front of your nose. Now press or push the bar down using only arm strength, only until you reach the locked out position. Keep your elbows stationary to your sides to ensure that you target the triceps and you don't end up using other muscles, which will decrease the effectiveness of the movement. Try to feel the exercise work the muscle from the bottom of the elbow to the back of the deltoid. This exercise is mainly a mass builder. Therefore, sets should fall in the three to four range and reps should be in the range of eight to 12. The key to this exercise is to keep your back erect and your wrist locked. This is to keep the pressure on the muscle and not the tendon. Our next exercise is the one arm tricep extension. Let's hit it. Standing in front of the mirror helps you to be sure that you're maintaining proper form. Begin with the dumbbell behind your head, palm facing the mirror. Now extend your arm upward, keeping the elbow as close to your ear as possible. Contract your muscle all the way up and all the way down. Don't lean forward and don't lean back. Keep your head and body straight. 
If you need to, you can support the arm while you are doing the exercise with the arm that you are not using. Simply reach behind your head with your other arm and grasp your elbow. This will help take the shoulder out of the movement and possibly alleviate an injury. This exercise is classified as a shaping movement. Therefore, sets should fall between 3 and 4 and the reps should be in the 12 to 25 range. In this exercise, you want to concern yourself with keeping strict form. Don't concern yourself with the weight. Now let's move on to reverse tricep pushdowns. Using the single handles or straight bar attachment on the overhead pulley, pull the handles with palms inward to you as if you were going to do a curl. Stand back slightly, then press the cable all the way down, bringing your hands to the side into the lockout position. Keep your resistance up all the way through the movement, and keep your elbows close to your body. Again, this is a shaping movement. Sets should fall in the 3 to 4 range, and reps between 12 and 25. This movement really isolates the lower head of the tricep. Remember to really squeeze and flex at the bottom of the rep. And now for our final exercise, the lying tricep extension. These may be performed with either a straight or easy curl bar. Using a medium to close grip, lie on a flat bench, arms extended out in front of you, but slightly up so that the weight is parallel with your forehead. Again, keeping your upper arm stationary and bending only from the elbows, smoothly lower the bar to your forehead. Then return, keeping tension on the triceps throughout. You should use a spotter during this movement. This is definitely a mass building exercise, and sets should fall between three and five, and the reps should fall in the eight to 12 range. To me, these are the king of the mass exercises for triceps. Over the years, it's helped me build killer tries, and it'll help you too. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. To get those killer arms, it takes time and consistent work. But be careful not to overtrain. Quality is more important in training than quantity. The biceps and triceps are relatively small muscle groups, unless you're Mike Matarazzo, maybe. So you probably won't need to do a lot of sets in order to get results. Novices may start with only four to six sets per body part. Intermediates, eight to 10 sets per body part. And advanced, no more than 12 to 15 sets per body part. Choose one or two mass building exercises along with one or two shaping exercises per body part for each workout. At first, you may notice your arms responding well to your efforts. Great, you say. I'll do more exercises and more sets per workout and get even bigger faster, right? Wrong. That will only overload your muscles and could result in loss of muscularity and may possibly result in injury. Remember, you have to give your muscles time to recover and respond. That's training intelligently. To get the best results, be sure to make the most out of every rep, first to last, using the heaviest weight you can handle and still maintain good form in order to maintain your level of intensity. Short duration, high intensity workouts. That's the ticket for stimulating muscle growth. To get the most from each repetition, you need to properly isolate the muscles you're training. 
Here's a few tips to help you isolate your biceps. One, keep your wrists locked and don't bend them as you curl the weight up. This allows you to keep tension on your biceps at the top of the contraction and not your wrists. If you can actually touch the barbell to your shoulders during a barbell curl, you're probably bending your wrists in. Two, keep your elbows in at your sides. Don't allow them to move forward or out away from your body. At the top of the movement, elbows should point down. This forces your biceps to do the work rather than using your lower back. It also places less emphasis on the muscles of the forearm. Three, keep your upper arms still, only allowing your forearms to move at the hinge-like elbow joint. Again, this forces your biceps to do the work. Four, don't lean backwards as you curl the weight up. Keep your body still and vertical. Leaning is not only cheating, it's not too great for the lower back. If you have to lean, then you're probably using a weight that's too heavy for you. Five, don't swing the weights up. Curl them in a smooth arc. Only after doing as many strict reps as possible can a little swinging be allowed. However, you should be able to do at least six to eight strict reps to failure before swinging is required. Six, tense your biceps hard at the top of the movement for a peak contraction, then lower slowly all the way down. Many novices think that the beginning of the curl is the time for the greatest effort, but it's really the top of the contracted position that makes it all happen. Don't use the top for a rest period, and don't let the weight just drop down. Control the movement up and down to keep that intensity high throughout the exercise. As we mentioned earlier, you can't expect to make great gains by exercise alone. Exercise needs to work hand in hand with proper nutrition and recuperation for success. The truest test of a physique athlete's dedication is the diet, and champions like Sandy Rydell use nutrition and supplementation to their fullest advantage. I believe the Weeder nutritional programs are one of the most extensive out in the market today. They have um, products that range from just the weekend warrior all the way through the pro professional bodybuilder. And I've used uh, Weeder products myself getting ready for contests. Basically my off-season diet is not too much different from my on-season diet with regards to the foods that I eat. What changes mostly is the caloric intake and when I prepare for a contest, I lower my calories slightly and I increase my aerobics. I always have a low fat, high carbohydrate, moderate protein diet all year round. Sandy's first meal of the day consists of six egg whites mixed with two servings Malta meal and one dry English muffin. In addition, she'll supplement with Restore 1030 Aminos and Power Force Total Plex Pack. Sandy's second meal includes two chicken breasts and three cups of rice. For her third meal, Sandy will have two chicken breasts and one serving pasta with butter buds. In addition, she'll supplement with fat burner Lipotroplex pack and Mass Amino 5000. For Sandy's fourth meal of the day, she'll have eight ounces of fish, one baked potato, two cups of green beans, along with a large tossed green salad. And for her fifth meal of the day, Sandy will have two chicken breasts, three cups of rice, and a large tossed green salad. Finally, for Sandy's sixth meal of the day, she'll have three to four cups of dry popcorn or 12 ounces of fat-free frozen yogurt. Now let's take a look at one of the IFBB's newest and freakiest pros, Mike Matarazzo and his nutritional program. Uh, my pre-contest diet basically consists of high protein, low carbohydrate meals. I incorporate about a 60% protein, 30% uh, carbohydrate, and 10% fats into my meals. As the contest gets closer, I cut my carbohydrates down and increase my protein to keep the caloric intake the same, but I'm getting my calories from protein instead of carb. This works for me. Lower carbohydrates makes me harder. We did 1030 recovery amino acids and the mass um, BCAA amino acids, which are branched chain amino acids. I use those in conjunction with each other. I highly recommend amino acids, especially these because they're encapsulated. They into your system very quickly, get right into the bloodstream, right to the muscle for that needed growth. Mike's first meal of the day consists of 18 egg whites mixed with spinach and one can of tuna. In, a, 
Edition Micro Supplement with Power Force Total Plex Pack, Mass Amino 5000. For a second meal of the day, Mike will have two medium flank steaks, two cups of rice, and a large toss green salad. For his third meal, Mike will have four chicken breasts, two cups of rice, and three cups of broccoli and cauliflower. In addition, he'll supplement the Fat Burners Lipotroplex Pack, Restore 1030 Aminos, Power Base, Coenzyme B12. For Mike's fourth meal of the day, he'll have four chicken breasts or servings of fish, two cups of rice, and three cups of broccoli and cauliflower. During the off-season, Mike will eat four meals a day, whereas during the pre-contest phase, Mike will eat six meals a day, which don't include his Mega Mass 2000 shakes. A personal training journal can be a great way not only to keep track of your training progress, but to motivate yourself. Here you have an opportunity to see in black and white what's working for you and where you may need to make changes. Staying informed is another important way to stay motivated. Muscle and Fitness and Flex Magazines are great sources for the latest information on training, nutrition, and many other issues that concern bodybuilders. Both offer advice from the champions and experts themselves, not only to inspire you, but to lend you a practical hand in improving your unique training program. We hope this instructional video has helped you put together a program to pump those arms to perfection. Remember, it takes more than exercise, nutrition, and recuperation to achieve your goals. It takes commitment. You have to want to make it happen. One more word to the wise. No matter what you may hear, anabolic steroids have no place in your training program. These drugs are dangerous. Use your head. Training intelligently will take your body to places you've never been before. Thanks for watching, and good luck.